We call this a mental health arts workshop. We're all artists. We all got dressed today. We all wear our own clothes. And the other thing is that we all got here. We danced through the, the world of Los Angeles, so we're here to celebrate our arts. We're going to learn about how to run art groups by being part of art groups. I think what's so amazing about having an art group is that it really brings forth the best in us. You know, as humans, we're creative beings and we don't always get to express that. The other thing it does is it creates a space where people can be vulnerable but within boundaries. So we have a time limit, we have a goal and an orientation, but it allows us to really open up and share parts of ourselves that we don't necessarily share even with our words and feel safe with each other. Art groups are not good for people with mental illness. Art groups are good for people. They really allow people to feel a part of something and feel connected to each other. And the fact that we're doing it in the mental health world is not because art is good for people with mental illness or people with mental illness should aim to be artists. It's because it's a very good way to get people together and feel comfortable with each other. And it's something that's often missing in the mental health world. One of the great opportunities that we had in the last couple months was to put together a, a workbook of sorts, a curricula of how to run art groups in all these different genres, in drama and dance, in poetry, in uh, creating zines and cartoons. To do that, we brought together five different people who worked on creating our section of the curricula that gave kind of an overview of the Painted Brain's philosophy about art groups and why it's important and what we try to promote in those spaces. It was a really powerful experience for everybody. What I really tried to do with this project is bring in people that see art as a way to heal and a way to feel like, like they're doing something positive for themselves and for each other. And so some of the people that were art group leaders are not clinicians, are not from the mental health world at all, but they've used art to recover from trauma experiences or from the loss of a loved one or um, just a way to feel alive and feel connected. The Pain Brain tries to really create a space where people experiencing different kinds of mental health symptoms don't feel like that's who they are, don't feel like they're defined by their symptoms. We create a space where people feel safe and comfortable and close to each other and we promote real quality relationships with each other, something that is really needed in the mental health world.